in the air and shouting uh, that we have a problem that is uh, a tremendous problem scare everybody and i'll tell you the other thing we immediately started buying all over the world we started buying uh, masks and gowns and everything else and we don't want to cause uh, pricing to go up this afternoon dr anthony fauci saying the president was not misleading when we would get up in front of of the press conferences which were very very common after our discussions with the president he really didn't say anything different than we discussed when we were with him but joe biden blasting the president's comments as a dereliction of duty he knew how dangerous it was now all this deadly disease ripped through our nation he failed to do his job on purpose it was a life and death betrayal of the american people Meantime, the Trump administration today announced the withdrawal of 2,200 U.S. troops from Iraq by the end of this month. It follows a decision to remove around 4,000 U.S. troops from Afghanistan, cutting troop levels in both countries by half in time for the election. Lester? All right, Jeff Bennett, thanks very much. I want to bring in our political director and moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd. Chuck, it seems like this electorate is really dug in. Talk about the timing and what the potential impact could be politically. Well, look, I don't think, and we've learned this the hard way with Donald Trump, no one incident is, is the silver bullet for him politically when it comes to some different things that he's faced. Think Access Hollywood tape going back to 2016, and obviously, in some ways, these revelations feel similar, right, in that here's this open recording, and he's like, you cannot believe the president said what? Uh, and then he told the public something else. But here's what I do think. Let's take a step back and look at the totality of just this week alone, Lester. Started with that report in the Atlantic magazine about the president disparaging those who served in the military. We've now got these recordings. There's a whistleblower coming out of the Department of Homeland Security. The point is, the president, this was no way he wanted to launch the first week of the general election after Labor Day. He wanted to put Biden on the uh, defensive, and instead, it is him having to answer a whole lot of questions. All right, Chuck. Another big story we're following. Much of the West remains under siege tonight in an epic wildfire battle up and down the Pacific coast with tens of thousands driven from their homes and hundreds of buildings destroyed. Miguel Almaguer tonight on the front lines. The fire
firestorm exploded across the west as many were sleeping. Ferocious winds fueling massive infernos from California to Washington. Burning out of control in Oregon, thousands forced to scramble for their lives. Chaos and fear as families raced to outrun a wall of fire. You just grab what you can and get out. Outside Medford looks like a war zone. Most residents have nothing left to return to. <laughs> Our Jacob Ward is there. This is what I've got. What you're wearing right now. This is what I've got. Across the region, raging fires and extreme heat creating a dire situation, decimating communities and pushing first responders to the brink. In California, near Big Sur, 14 firefighters overrun by fast-moving flames, forcing them to deploy emergency shelters like these, wow. their last line of defense, one responder in critical condition. <laughs> near Lake Oroville, flames burst through dry brush, barely towards communities as 20,000 evacuate, some lucky to be alive. I thought I was mad dog. There was fire 360 degrees around me. Across California, skies shrouded with an ominous haze as more than two dozen major fires wreak havoc in the region. Crews have been chasing hot spots all day long, and when they can't get ahead of them, this is what happens. The home behind me is gone, and that's a fire truck ablaze. Near San Diego, the infamous Santa Ana winds fanning the flames into nearby communities. In Washington, south of Spokane, an entire town nearly wiped off the map. And the unprecedented threat is growing. More than 30 million people are under red flag warnings. Jesus. As searing heat, dead trees, and whipping winds turn the region into a furnace. Here at the Creek Fire, where officially hundreds of structures have been destroyed, including this historic landmark, officials wouldn't be surprised if that number jumped into the thousands. Across California, crews are battling the second, the third, and the fourth largest wildfire in state history, all at the exact same time. Lower. Lester? That destruction is really unbelievable. Miguel, thank you. Let's turn back to the COVID crisis now in new details this evening about why a major vaccine trial was stopped after one of the volunteers developed what appears to be a neurological problem. Tom Costello now has the latest. AstraZeneca's vaccine candidate has been considered one of the most promising, but its phase three trial is now on hold after a female volunteer in the UK developed symptoms consistent with transverse myelitis, a serious inflammation of the spinal cord, though no final diagnosis has been confirmed. With an abundance of caution at a time like this, you put a clinical hold, you invest to get it carefully to see if anybody else who received that vaccine or any of the other vaccines might have had a similar finding of a spinal cord problem it's see anytime you try to rush something like this and you try to put something like this on the market this is what you have to be be concerned about because it can it can uh, transfer from one problem to another and the other problem that it's transferring over to may be more serious or just as serious as the original problem so anytime you get to messing with serum and you get to messing with uh, this type of antidopes and, and different types of uh, biological chemicals, you really have to do an extensive testing on this stuff to make sure that it's safe for the majority of the human people out there. There's always going to be a certain amount of people that's going to be allergic to just about everything. Just about anything. You know? But you got to halfway hit the happy medium to where it's not affecting the majority or the masses rather than helping the masses. And that's probably the reason why that they put the brakes on this. As far as what the president has done, I agree. It was dereliction of duty. And he should have told we the people concerning the dangers. We all need to pray. We need to pray for not only... A vaccine but we need to pray for the people out west pertaining to all the wildfires we need to pray for all the troubles that America is under right now if there's ever been a time that we needed to hold one another up in prayer and to pray God have mercy upon us as sinners it's today thank you for listening good luck to all of us and once more Shalom <laughs>